Um, then I will open up this uh, budget workshop for the Board of Selectmen. And we have uh, Town Administrator Kate Bush with us this evening. I'm going to try and time stamp tonight as uh, we move through it to assist Channel 79. So um, it's 7.03 p.m. on the 28th of January. And we welcome you, Kate, and look forward to hearing your budget presentation. Okay. So um, this was our first year of budgeting using OpenGov as our budget um, platform. Um, using the platform forced review of how we do things. Um, we did ask the department heads, as always, to prepare zero-based budgets. I would say the results were a bit mixed this year as we learned the new system. Um, we also had asked them to limit their increases. I think you'll see that pretty positively reflected. In reviewing the budget, um, I reviewed the request not just to the current budget, but also to prior year actuals. Um, I did a data-driven review. Uh, any increase that was a certain percentage over last year's budget or over the prior year's fiscal 18's actuals trigger review. And then I went back and I looked at seven to eight years worth of history on those accounts um, to evaluate the request. One of that resulted in a lot, eliminating a lot of just-in-case budgets. Mm. We had some things for office equipment repair, just in case the fax machine breaks. Uh, so we had a bunch of those kind of things, and we eliminated that. It also resulted in consolidation of some minor, less-used budgets. Um, into one budget, um, like the office equipment repair, we did leave some money for that, consolidated it under my budget, so if somebody has something that breaks down, we, we do still have funds to replace that. Um, doing those kind of reviews, it resulted in about a 0.01 mil decrease um, in the budget. So some other things of note in your book, we now have three years of history, the adopted budget for the current fiscal year, the transfers in and out of accounts, then the revised budget for the current fiscal year, the year-to-date actual as of December 31st, and then we're showing next the town administrator's proposed budget and the variance of the proposed budget to fiscal 19's revised budget. Note that we are not showing the department requests. Um, partly a space thing, because to add in the transfer column, we needed more room. But it's also part of um, Jen's and my drive to make everybody view this. This is now my budget. So it's not about the department requests at this point. It's about what I am proposing to you. Um, at the beginning of the budget, there's a summary that also includes the current proposed FTEs for each department or division. We've added, we've updated the narratives to include budget drivers for each department. The intent there is to show what costs impact the department budget, not just the changes, but if your department is primarily labor costs, you know, that's what's driving your budget. Um, we've also consolidated the other narrative elements, the accomplishments, performance measures, um, staffing information at the department level rather than having one at each division. So like the police you know, department, they have nine, ten divisions. Instead of having one of those for each division, it's all consolidated at the start. And then at the, I think it's in your side, like in the pockets in the side, ready to insert. Uh, in the back, we have some information on non-budgeted funds, mm -hmm. uh, which is something there. So now into the budget itself. Uh, as I said, this, this budget is now my proposal to you for how best to carry out your policies, how to meet your goals and objectives, addressing growth in the town and respecting taxpayer needs. By the end of February, it'll be your proposal to the Board of Finance, your plan, your policy document stating how you want the town to operate, what you want to achieve, what the town needs, and programs you prioritize. You know, sometimes I think it'd be nice if our budget was like the Board of Ed, where the Board of Finance just cut the bottom line, and we decided how to allocate the money, um, but it's not. 
Therefore, it's vital that you, as the board of selectmen, get to my next page, uh, be vocal about your priorities and the reasoning in the budget, but in your budget decisions to impact the way the board of finance makes their decisions. Um, and this, this budget is continue to address the growth in the town as well as your goals and objectives. Um, before we get on to more specifics, one important thing I want to point out there is we made an accounting change in how we're going to deal with some self-funding park and rec programs. These are things they run that the revenues we take in for them um, completely cover the expenses. We've moved them into the general fund for more transparency in the accounting. That increases both the revenues and expenditure sides by about $495,000. So sometimes when I'm talking about percentages, I'm going to back those things out. So, first thing, the increase overall, excluding the accounting change for parks and rec, but including capital, is just under 3%. If you look at the increase in the operating part of the budget, that is 3.89%. So, where is it coming from? The police chief requested both an additional sworn officer and three additional civilian dispatchers. This was an either or option. Either one would get us to a point where we could add an SRO at the middle school. My proposal is to add the additional dispatchers rather than hire an additional sworn officer. And I thought long and hard about this, had quite a few discussions with the chief about it talked to, you know, quite a few discussions with Jen about it, um, to come to the decision that that was the way to go. What I wanted to look at was, what's the police department that we should have? And then what's the best way to um, staff that police department? So, to do the police department we should have, we should have two people on dispatch at all times, a middle school SRO, and dedicated narcotics officer. If we did that with all sworn personnel, assuming all the officers were step one, that would cost a uh, million thirty-seven thousand. With a mix of civilian dispatchers and sworn personnel, it would cost a million eleven thousand. If we go to people at the top step and note that the cops get to the top step in five years, where dispatchers it would take seven. But at that point. <coughs> It would cost 1.3 million for the police and only 1.2 million for a mix of civilian dispatchers and police officers. Wait, can, can you say that again, sir? Um, Run through those numbers. So, if, which ones? Just all just, of them? Yeah, sorry. Just okay. Like that. Everybody at step one is a million thirty-seven thousand for the police. Yeah. For all police, and it'd be a million eleven thousand for a mix of civilian dispatchers and police with everybody at the top step maxing out, it'd be $1.3 million for police and $1.2 million for the mix. Other considerations in that decision for me were that we invest a lot of money in training the police officers and we should use them for what they're trained to do. An individual who's trained to do dispatch will perform those duties at a higher level than someone who only does it on a periodic basis. If we assigned an officer exclusively to the dispatch desk, they lose their abilities as an officer. They, those skills begin to erode. And the way I looked at it, I like analogies, so I looked at it like a hockey team. You wouldn't run your forwards and your defensemen you know, through the goal you know, on a rotating basis. You bring in a goalie who's trained as a goalie. That's the best way to do it. Um, and in speaking with the chief, you know, one of the other benefits, if we can get civilian dispatchers in, we get more officers on the road, which means that we aren't kicking some cases up to the detective bureau. The patrol officers are able to follow through on their own cases. We'd also be able to have, um, participate in some of the statewide task forces. We haven't done that in over 30 years, but there are things like statewide narcotics task force where if we can assign an officer there. We, we basically do give up an officer for time, but it opens us up to a lot of resources from the state, from other departments, 
that we can't take advantage of now because we can't afford to dedicate an officer to that. Um, we have another person, I'm proposing another personnel addition. Um, due to a personnel issue in January 2017, an employee had to be reassigned from the Parks and Recreation Department to the Public Works Department. And we're trying to get the page again. Okay. So since that time, since January 2017, Parks and Rec has worked with one less employee. Um, they've managed by having the Parks Supervisor do some of the labor and by not providing the normal standard of care which we would like to have in our parks, which we're accustomed to and which they strive to achieve. With the addition of the maintenance of Highland Farms and the short lane property to the responsibility of the Parks and Rec Department, as well as the increased use of, the, of existing parks and fields, the director asked to have that position restored. So as part of the evaluation of that request, I first evaluated whether or not the position that was moved from Parks and Rec to the Public Works Department should remain. So without that position, some maintenance work being done at the Town Hall, which is a 90-year-old building, would have to cease. Our facility maintenance mechanic would be required to do routine and minor maintenance work, necessitating bringing in outside companies to do work that he's currently doing at the Town Hall Public Works Garage and the, at the um, Police Department. So based on that analysis, my decision was to include uh, the rest of, basically the restoration of the Parks and Rec position and keep the other position in the Public Works Department. Without these personnel additions, the increase in the operating budget would be about 2.95%. And the overall increase, including the capital, would be just over 2%. So these personnel increases are significant. Um, and it will be, um, I think, a good, lively discussion as you debate whether you should put forward my proposal on those positions. Um, I am also proposing increased hours for the blight officer. Um, the time required to investigate and properly document blight cases has exceeded our original expectations. That's um, only about five hours a week. It does not bring it up to a um, full-time or a benefited position. So those are the big nuts. Um, some other notable items. We've included some funding that would allow us to reduce some long-term liabilities related to compensated absences. Do you want to describe that a little bit more? <laughs> <laughs> um, currently, the majority of our employees, with the exception of the police department, <clears throat> can accrue an excessive amount of vacation time. We would like to reduce that. We've attempted to negotiate that with the unions. We haven't been successful to date, but um, we would like to look at starting with the non-represented employees, reduce the amount of vacation that they can carry over from one year to the next. But because people do have these balances that they would otherwise be paid out for at their time of retirement or termination, we would have to pay them out. Better to pay them out now than, you know, five years from now when they retire. I mean, you know, even me, if you look at what I'm making now compared to what I'd be paid, you know, when I retire, cheaper to do it now. Um, there's a significant increase in the legal budget. That's on the assumption that we'll have an uptick in assessment appeals that will necessitate legal counsel involvement. <coughs> The salary contingency line item is increased as it includes funding for two years worth of two union contract settlements. Um, we do have tentative agreements with the two that are open. So it's possible that by the time the Board of Finance is working on the budget that we may be able to move that money into the individual line items. The debt service budget assumes that we'll have an issue in early 2019 with principal and interest payments due on that issue in fiscal 20. These increases impact both the town debt service account and the sewer debt service account. 
The school debt service is down at this time as the older school building bonds are amortized. But I would say over the next couple of years, you, you'll see that going back up um, as we start issuing bonds related to the Oxbridge Elementary School project. And then there's also a significant increase in the cost of radio maintenance coming under the emergency preparedness department. Um, some of the other smaller things we're doing with the budget is consolidating some training and medical budgets for the fire department under the fire commission. We're moving the RTM budget under the town clerk's department. Okay, so that's, yeah. Then I'm just briefly on capital. There are some rather large items in capital this year. Um, and I'd like to suggest to the Board of Finance that they consider these for bonding, but I'm recognizing this proposal that the financing method is their purview now, not mine, so um, they are in the capital budget. Um, the two biggest items like that that I think they should look at for bonding are funding for the parking lots at Highland Farms and funding for development of the short lane property adjacent to Weed Beach. Um, other big items in the capital budget are continued funding of our reserves for the purchase of equipment and maintenance of town building. Um, we've got money in there to upgrade the traffic preemption system for the fire trucks. That's the thing that makes the lights turn green as they're going. Uh, we have money in there for sidewalk rehabilitation and for new sidewalks, um, paving. And then the local share of funding for improvements at the Neurotin and Ledge intersection. So, now the fun. <laughs> so I just said, we, this is our first year using OpenGov. So we wanted to show you some of what OpenGov can do for you in terms of visuals. So, um, Jen put together some graphs. So this first one is showing the proposed budget by expense type. So you can see personnel is the largest chunk. Contractual services coming next, and then debt service, and then a lot of the smaller ones. Does that personnel budget include benefits? Yes, yes. And I'll show you something at another one on that too. <laughs> um, so this is the same, um, the same thing, but by expense type. And I'm sorry, no, in this graph it does not show it include benefits, but I do have one that will show all the personnel including the benefits. Okay. Um, and so one of the things we can do with this is, you know, this tells you one story, but if you want to look at as a line graph, see how different things are going over the years. You know, it's a different way to look at it visually. Um, here we have, again, the same budget, but by department. And so look at the biggest one, the biggest department is debt service. The next biggest is general overhead and, and miscellaneous expenses. That's where the employee benefits are. That's where all of our property and liability insurance is. Um, contingency is in there, transfers out to the um, capital fund. And this graph shows all those historically. And again, you know, if we wanted to look at it in a different way, you can go to lines. And stack it. Um, and we're looking to make some of these graphs forward facing so that we could put them on the website. Residents could go and look at it and, um, and see what there is. Um, so this graph shows just our wages historically. So you can see full time is the biggest part of it. Kate, can you drill down on overtime? Is there a way to look at that in I, more detail? Yes. Mm. Look at just overtime. 
And then we can look, that's just over time, but I can change the filter and break it down now by department. So now you see that when it comes to overtime, the police patrol budget is the largest um, overtime. And what's interesting, the way it goes up and down, you know, that sometimes correlates to their staffing levels where sometimes full time, if full time is down, overtime goes up. Um, and then next you have public works is the next big chunk. And again, you know, sometimes those are interesting to see how they're progressing over the years. Now the one you asked, Kip, this one. So this is one that breaks down our personnel costs. And so we see all of the costs involved in personnel, medical insurance, overtime, pension contributions, social security. Um, we've even included, I'm not sure, but can you get the detail on it? The grouping includes, um, so all the different things you wouldn't see, shift differential, dental insurance, all the variety of things um, related to, yeah, to personnel. debt service being the biggest. This is the this is another way of looking at the budget that's without debt service and without the library. I asked for things that um, that I had you know where I could basically cut the budget. Mm. And then this would um, that's history of those same kind of things. So there's lots more that it can do. Um, I'm sure we'll come up with some things as we're going along. That we might well, that's the thing, you know, <clears throat> the kind of things you want to see. And um, mm -hmm. I'm not the wits. Jen's the one, you know, who knows this. I'm learning, but Jen is the real expert at this. Will she be with us at the table when we're going department by department? She might not be here tomorrow, but she will. Um, she's right now, she's down in D.C. at GFOA Intermediate. She's on the National Committee for her Professional Association. Awesome. Um, which is a, a tremendous thing. Um, so she's at those meetings. Okay. Um, but yes, she will be with us. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So no small task, F and B, <laughs> to mm -hmm. play around with open gov. Well, she gave the first draft that I was going to ask her. Which is <laughs> one? The one that, which is really more select and, and which is a great draft. Okay, but it, it does get into the analytics as you were talking about. It would be interesting to see what the average staffing level was and then uh, do a comparison to the overtime to show certain things exactly where you can just project that if we have open spots, what the road to over time might in fact be. Yeah. Yeah, I do we you know some of this stuff like this <coughs> all is feeding in from um, from Munis and from the budget. Yeah. But we can add other things, um, like the staffing is not in that, but we can we're working on adding um, a report that shows staffing levels. Yeah, well, for the first part the first year, yeah. this is really good. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm likely to want to see something like that in relation to the civilian dispatch request because we've heard that that request will um, free up patrol officers to be redeployed, but yet I know that the union contracts, for example, lay out the squad that we have to have on staff. So I'm, I'm going to want to see if we can sort of square those two requests and see the actual impact of civilian dispatch on staffing and overtime. And it might be a little complicated for this year, but yeah, I think it's worthwhile trying to take a crack at that. Yeah, because theoretically civilian dispatchers should reduce the need for overtime of a police officer. Not necessarily the need for overtime completely because you can have a civilian dispatcher Correct. working overtime. But um, the other issue would be, does having that extra officer out there on the road 
um, allow you to have a large enough shift that when one guy calls out sick or two guys call out sick, you don't need to bring in something out of the time because you're staffed up enough. Yeah. Okay. That's all I have. Kate, one thing, I, um, I'm not quite sure um, if this is possible, but one thing we talk about, and I think it will be even more critical this year, is how state mandates affect the budget. And we used to use the term 16, I think I remember, 16% of the operating budget um, is basically state mandated. I, I could be we did that under Carl's like right. Right. I remember Carl yeah. had calculated that. So I don't know, I mean, to see a visual somehow, I don't even know if it would be feasible. That would be very helpful for people because unfortunately I think that um, this is something that we're going to have to be more and more aware of. And that to talk about out of our control, absolutely, 100% out of our control. So I don't know how you do it or where you would do it, just something to think about. Well, it's a matter of identifying those items that we have to have in the budget because the state requires us to have, you know, to provide a service or, you know, even things like having to have an advertising budget because we're not allowed to simply post things online. Um, once we identify those things that are mandated, I don't think creating the visual is that difficult. Not that difficult for me, it might be for Jen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I'd like to open it up for any other board questions this evening. Mark, do you have no, any questions? No, I don't. Okay. Uh, Kip? You know, I think you covered most of the issues that I saw in the, in the top line review. Um, we'll, we'll talk about, I'm sure when we get to it, the why the fire departments consolidate all their medical expenses into the commission. We'll talk about that later, I'm sure. Yeah, that was a, that was a decision um, that we made because we felt it would be a little bit easier budgeting-wise. Mm -hmm. um, they don't necessarily, they are all budgeting for a max number, but not, not hitting that all the time. Mm. So we budgeted for slightly less than the max. It'll all run through the fire commission he was trying to get rid of some of those, like I said, the just in case numbers. Okay. We also consolidated the firefighter one training classes. The fire commission will manage that. Right. At each individual department level, they'll have other training above that level. And we'll talk about why the emergency management radio cost goes up so much in the capital area. That's that federal. In the capital? Yeah, isn't it the capital budget that goes up? So there's much? a maintenance cost that's going up dramatically that we didn't have in the past, and it's about $60,000. No, I'm thinking about the one that's $2 million. That's about the band, and the band. Um, the band, okay. Which I'm not proposing we move forward with because it's still up in the air. Certain thing. Yeah, okay. And if we have to do it, um, it's a multi million dollar. No, I see it. It's project. over $6 million. Yeah. yeah. And, mm -hmm. Kate, at this point in time, do you know where we're trending on insurance renewals? Yes. Well, we, for workers' comp and um, the liability policies, um, we're actually trending downwards. Um, mm. Our rate for workers' comp is down about 3%, but then you have to build in um, wage increases. Um, and our liability, um, or at worst, flat. Um, if we agree to a three-year renewal, which I believe we'll do, we'll be down for this year, and our greatest exposure would be minus three for this year, plus three the year after, plus three the year after. So worst case scenarios, we're up 3% from where we are today. And then our medical insurance is trending about, we're hoping to have it down to about 10%. I believe it's budgeted in here at 12%. Okay. Um, we have been working through the contract negotiations to increase, um, increasingly share the burden with the cost of those increases with the employees. Um, so we have um, 
the budget as it is here does not reflect what we have in the tentative agreements with um, the town hall and the police union, um, which would be an improvement to our cost. It'd be better. It, yeah. Okay. okay. You know. Okay. And just, you know, on the insurance, I want to give credit to our um, health and safety committee uh, and to management in general that employees and management have worked very hard to monitor uh, the issues around town hall and the other, the other town buildings to keep the risks, to limit our risks. Your highest cost in workman's comp is what police? On police per person basis. And police and drivers. Drivers, okay. Um, so the at home van drivers are. That's high. Yeah. Okay. And um, public works people. Right. Okay. Any other questions for Kate tonight? Okay, um, we're going to have a lot of work to do. Yes. Um, I really appreciate, um, can't underscore the uh, gratitude that we all feel for you and Jen and the effort that you put in on the Open Gov and the professional development around that with all of our staff to get them up to speed and, and go back to a true zero based budgeting. Yeah. Um, but I, it's probably no surprise to anybody that. Um, uh, a three percent or over increase in the Board of Selectmen budget is not a sustainable increase in my opinion. So we have some work to do and we look forward to rolling up our sleeves tomorrow night. And then do you want to say to the department heads, they really they took this on. We had some um, you know, wasn't perfect. We're working on its new, you know, new system and so we had some learning curve and you know, improvements to be made in the system, but um, they all dug in and we got it done. So Absolutely. Thank you for that. Yep. Um, before we break from tonight's presentation, I just want to give an opportunity for anybody on the Board of Finance and F&B to ask any general questions of Kate's presentation. Uh, a couple of questions. One, I'd be interested, you talked about some of the increases. I'd be interested in what in your mind were the highlights of decreases that you had or things that you tackled and changed to try to make it less expensive? And my second question is I'm wondering if you've been able to get any analytical value out of open up. So in other words, you get your budget total. Have you been able to uh, analyze trends or look at ratios of things like spend per FTE or per, uh, per, per citizen in town that would give you some insights? And also whether you've been able to take advantage of what they talked about when we invested in this, which was benchmarking with other towns to see kind of either how your historic spend or this emerging budget maybe compares with any other town or is it premature to have done any of that? It's, yeah, it's premature to do that, but I'll tell you, like, one of the things that was very easy for me straight off, um, and I'm going to pull up the clock right here. Um, Just having some of the numbers all in one place, like you know, having running totals there, and seeing as you go down here, seeing the um, the increased numbers. That was, you know, that was really good for me. Um, being able to working through the budget, being able to see all that pretty quickly. Um, and of course, a change would have a real time change in those statistics. You can see. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think this year we were still we were still just learning, um, and for me, I, you know, one thing I struggled with is it's in alphabetical order. <laughs> it is not in the it, it's not in the um, you know how I'm used to looking at things. So I don't think we got as much out of it this year as we hoped. But can, one, can you reorganize? Sorry, can you reorganize? That's the way it is. Or you that's the way it is. And, and look, and I think for everybody else, it's a lot easier. Okay. Okay. I think you know it's just because of you know having been in finance, you know, doing it so long and used to all the numbers. It was just me. Well, like yes. the fire departments are not all together. The fire departments are yeah. not all together. Yeah, that's an easy yeah. one to pick out. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
there is an engineering <coughs> system. I'm sure. But I think, you know, one thing, we're going to be, our plan for next year is as soon as the budget is approved this year, we're going to open this up next year so that people can treat it as a worksheet and be working on it through the year as they need to. And um, well, so we can just do our cutting online. That's fantastic. <laughs> 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 you know that part I'm not giving you a password. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. <laughs> No, but a department head could start making notes in the budget. Like if you, um, you know, we have some, I don't know why it's going there. And that's not, that's not, not, not you're happy with this change and this is We are, happy. yes, we're happy with it. I think it really is going to do tremendous things for us. Um, I have no idea what I just got there. This is, okay. It should be opening up like a worksheet that you know, see what it actually looks like. This was nice. And you see, I've got all the information here attached, all these documents attached, so we can see um, any kind of document that had to do with the budget. We had all this <coughs> space up in here to use. People can put in notes. And are these town reports uh, printed out of OpenGov or out of means? They're out of OpenGov. Really? So yeah. That's great. Yeah. You know, I, you know Jen did a, a tremendous job. And they look terrific. It's a great, great job. Yeah. Yeah, I want to thank you so, for the reformat mm -hmm. of the, the budget book sheets. Yeah, it's really good. More data, it's better. Um, so, I, you know, back to your question, I think that um, you'll see us able to do a lot more of that analysis next year. But this year was a lot of learning how to use it. Last question. What's the total board of selectmen budget change, including capital, recognizing that we would bond some of it, but the selectmen debt service capital, what's that total number? Because I heard 3.8% for your operating budget. Is it less than 3 for the total? For the total? Yeah. If it depends on whether you're backing out the, um, the change we made for um, But it's it was 3%. So I'm trying to put papers here. I'm having to put them around. Welcome to the conference. Yeah. I brought the papers back. Um, yeah, overall, the increase was just under 3%. And that's, you know, when you take out the change in accounting for parts and rec. Right, if you take that and the preliminary Board of Education budget, we have that? No, we don't have that. Any of those. No, they're not um, using OpenGov. So we will have to manually enter their number when, um, when we have them. The page will put them in the meeting, so. Okay. I know it's a big effort to try a new system, as, as JB said, but the effort that you all put in it collectively to make something like this work and then make it a tool for the future uh, is fantastic. Thank you. Really, really great. Well, really, thank Jen. She, you know. She's a star. Yeah. She is. I, I, I do like the fact that we have taken out the budget uh, that the office requested because this is your budget and that was a confusing one. And I really like that we've added transfers in in the budget book because we know that we wanted to do an analysis on what departments we year over year seem to be transferring money to, so that we can be more accurate in mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. overall budgeting. So, we, very we good. We have to do, in <coughs> we do analysis for, uh, actually, Taylor does the analysis, where we go with what the approved budget is for the departments and line items, and compare it to what the year-end spend is to see where there's variances. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We discussed, possibly, 
um, doing the same type of analysis on the board selectively because it is a lot of transfers and other things. Yeah. yeah. So the only is trans Nobody's isn't that here? Do Don't you see that here, Kate? Well, you'll see it there. Yeah. The yeah. Only, there are only area where it's, um, you have to be careful on that is the salary lines because. Right. Um, those like for non reps, we never budget in you know in the um, line items because that happens after the budget prepare the board select and determines us. So those aren't you know fair to judge. Um, it's more the, it's more the other lines mm -hmm. where people may have budgeted poorly um, or you had an emergency. Well, we look we look at it for information and then yeah. if we have the opportunity, we sit down with the superintendent of finance and chair of the board of ed to discuss things because it does show, oh, look, there were three security projects done at the schools that they didn't know about when they were budgeting. Makes sense, not an issue. And they found the savings elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So and I'm sure the town is very similar. Yeah. Can you take three items? Quick I'm sorry. The Board of Education, when this is all said and done, is that going to be in there? Yeah, we'll put, we'll put it in there. Level? Like line by line? Line by line, yeah. Is it going to be uploaded as one like one number? Yes. Okay, so if, if the Board of Ed were to invest in OpenGov, um, they could have it line by line. Mm -hmm. But on our side, they're one line. Okay, second item, you used to prepare like a, I'll call it a small narrative. Do we have an issue or not? Was that just what you talked about? So you used to put together like a five, six page line. Item. Yeah, you used to talk about the 3.89, what led to it. I can send it out to everybody. <laughs> and, and third of all, good news, I just really want to commend you for, this is a long time coming, but every capital project has a request summary behind it. So uh, we would expect something very similar from the Board of Education. You get it. You get it. Yeah, I think that, you know we, we started that a few years ago. I think um, yeah. Martha had a list of questions. Yeah. Martha came up with it. Yeah. It's good to know that. Yeah. yeah. Jen was not letting anybody off without awesome. any. Awesome. Great job. But I found them very helpful too in um, in preparing the budget and evaluating it. The one thing that I noticed that we need to change is um, we have to feel the priority, and we need to be specific with people about you know. Some departments would say priority high. You have three part in three cap capital projects that all say high. Well, which one's your top priority? You know, like if you look at public works and I think parks and they know them. And that's what we want. So we're going to have to be more strict with people and make sure that this is how you you know, you're going to put like priority means, you know, a number with one being the highest priority. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I can help you define priority if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> a little yeah. wordsmithing. We, we also like that the other funds are now included in the back of the book. Which, yes, which, exactly. Um, That's the Jack Davis Yep. No, Jack and Jen actually, and without, without, and there's several other members of that but without Jen, we need to take it. Um, well, yeah, because we're only showing what would be needed to finance this portion of the budget. What was your question this again? Just the left side of the budget, so that's what would be needed to finance this left side of the budget. Yeah. Oh, same. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a both is important for the the grant. Well, it's the revenue, exactly. the revenue budget. Just where, shows. where does that other part show up? Yeah, it won't show up until the yeah. board finance level. Okay. okay, we are planned to be back here tomorrow night at 5.30 to begin our department by department review. Um, Kate, are we in this room tomorrow night? We are or in this room. Okay, great. <clears throat> And then again on Wednesday evening, also at 5.30, we will continue our review. Um, we're basically doing the smaller departments tomorrow night, and then Wednesday night, Parks and Rec Police, Library, Public Works, and a few others. <clears throat> so we will look forward to seeing all of you tomorrow evening.
Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much.